The tax haven racket is the biggest scam in the world. It's run by the international banks with the cooperation of the world's financial powers for the benefit of corporations and the mega rich. This talk is about strategy, but first you have to know about the ta target. Tax havens are also known as offshore financial centers. They're places that operate secret bank accounts and shell companies that hide the names of the real owners from tax authorities and law enforcement. They use nominees, front men. Dewey, Cheatham, and Howe is a common company we call them. Sometimes the offshore and corporation companies set up the shells. Sometimes they're set up directly by the banks. Often someone will use a shell company in one jurisdiction that owns a shell in another jurisdiction that owns a bank account in a third. That's called layering. No one can follow the paper trail. Some trusts are set up to hide, to hide money, and they have a flea clause. That means if law enforcement comes snooping, the trust is automatically moved someplace else. This system is run by the big corporations, by the big banks. The offshore system has two purposes. One is to launder the multi-billions of dollars of dirty money. It, offshore is where most of the world's drug money is laundered, estimated up, at up to $500 billion a year. That's more than the total income of the world's poorest 20%. Perhaps another $500 billion comes from fraud and corruption. Those figures fit with IMF numbers that as much as $1.5 trillion of illicit money is laundered annually, that's 2 to 5 percent of the global economic output. The other major purpose of offshore is for tax evasion, estimated at the third tranche of $500 billion a year. That's how corporations and the very rich have opted out of the tax system. They have very sophisticated mechanisms. There's transfer pricing. A company sets up a trading company offshore, the ABC Trading Company, in Grand Cayman or in Jersey or the Isle of Man and sells its widgets there for under market price. The trading company sells it to a real client for market price. The profits are offshore, not where they really were generated. The company just pays tax on the phony first price. Now tell me, would you buy plastic buckets from the Czech Republic for $973 each? Would you buy tissues from China at $1,874 a pound, a cotton dish towel from Pakistan for $154. How about tweezers from Japan, $4,896 each. U.S. companies, at least on paper, were not getting much for their exported products. If you were in business, would you sell bus and truck tires to Britain for $11.74 each? How about color video monitors to Pakistan? $21.90, prefab buildings to Trinidad, $1.20 a unit. Comparing all of the claimed export and import prices to real world prices, the professors figured the 2001 U.S. as tax loss at $53 billion. Or a company sets up subsidiaries offshore in tax havens to own the logos or intellectual properties that they've created, like Microsoft does in Ireland transferring software that was made in America that benefited from work done by Americans, ed educated in America. But Ireland uh, charges Microsoft only 11% taxes instead of the US, it would have to pay 35%. Why is Ireland getting the benefit of American created software? It's legal. We need to change the law. When logos are offshore, the company pays royalties to use the logo and deducts the amount as expenses. But the payments are not taxed or are minimally taxed offshore where they're moved. Or a company has a tax haven sales office or public relations office which is somehow assigned a very large share of the profits. It's all part of profit laundering. Some more numbers. Half of world trade is between various parts of the same corporation. Experts believe that as much as half the world's capital flows through offshore centers. The totals held offshore include 31% of the net profits of U.S. multinationals. The whole collection of tax scams is why between 1989 and 95 of U.S. multinational corporations operating in the U.S. 
with assets of at least 250 million, sales of at least 50 million, nearly two-thirds, two-thirds paid no U.S. income tax. Over 90 percent reported owing taxes of under 5 percent. In 1995, six in ten paid less than a million. So if you look at that same period, 96 to 2000, Goodyear's profits were four, 442 million. It paid no tax. It got a $23 million rebate. Colgate-Palmolive made $1.6 billion, got back $21 million. Other companies getting rebates in 98, Texaco, Chevron, PepsiCo, Pfizer, J.P. Morgan, MCI WorldCom, General Motors, Phillips Petroleum, Northrop Grumman. Microsoft reported $12.3 billion U.S. income in 1999, paid zero federal taxes. So during the 1950s, U.S. corporations accounted for 28 percent of federal revenues. Now they represent about 11 percent. Who makes up the rest? If big corporations paid taxes of 35 percent on the U.S. profits, as the law requires, corporate taxes in 2002 would have been about $308 billion instead of an estimated $136 billion. This is especially a crisis for developing countries. The Brazilian government says that in 2001, its companies exported $175 million worth of goods to the Caribbean island of St. Lucia, which, if you've been there, is mostly a lot of beach. What were they doing with $175 million of products just from Brazil? 123 million in Brazilian goods went to the Cayman Islands, 105 million to Panama. Those tiny markets did not absorb the goods. They would transfer pricing way stations to cheat the Brazil government of taxes. So why are the developing countries in hock to the West in a way that lets the IMF, the World Bank, enforce neoliberalism, privatizing water, setting fees for schools and health? The offshore system ensures they can collect taxes loans to countries run by dictators who stashed the money offshore, and some of the same international banks that made the loans, they dig a deeper hole that the countries, the people can never climb out of. There's just more loans from the, from the West, more commands from the West. The system de steals billions from developing countries, a lot more than the 50 billion a year in aid that the countries get. This is the dirty little secret of globalization. The end of controls on capital flows, the expansion of the tax haven system from 25 years ago, it's more than double to about 70, 70 tax havens. This means that there's a growing inequality both inside the U.S. and between the West and the developing world as the big corporations and the very rich hide the money from taxes. Even groups who, uh, that are seeking money for social programs, health, housing, education, don't seem to realize that spending money depends on getting money, and that getting is blocked by the offshore tax evasion system. People have told me it's not our issue. Well, when your programs get cut by Congress because it says there's no money, it is your issue. It's also an issue for middle class people who complain about property taxes and sales taxes. We need to tell them that their property taxes are so high because the government can't collect income taxes from corporations and the super rich. It's an issue for small business. They're in competition with multinationals that dodge taxes through transfer pricing. Small business that doesn't run internationally cannot do that. We need to make this a campaign issue now. The second strategy is the corporate social responsibility one. We need to add to the boilerplates of socially responsible investment funds and government and union pension funds standards banning corporate tax dodging, and for banks, standards banning enabling tax dodging. We need to use shareholder action and publicity to force corporations to deal with those demands. A third part of the strategy is research. We need help from university professors, students, others to investigate and publicize the tax evading practices of corporations. Anyone reading the SEC statements uh, filings about Enron would have seen it had 700 shell companies in Grand Cayman. What were they for? Why didn't analysts expose that? We need a tax dodgers hall of shame, similar to what Citizen Works has done for the corporate inverters. 
the companies that move their headquarters offshore. We need a website where information about offshore uh, tax evasion and the manipulations by corporations can be available so that when anybody puts in the name of that corporation, they come upon that. And finally, I invite you to take up this issue to get involved in these projects uh, independently with the Tax, tax Justice Network. Our website is taxjustice-usa.org. You can sign on to an email list or come and talk to me afterwards if you want to be part of this network. Let's get the country to tell the corporations that the taxes they are dodging are our money. Thank you.